something you keep hearing a lot about in the news is something which people call fake news. It's hard to know what is true and what isn't. <clears throat> what has, what has uh, 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 stood the test of time, you can pretty well trust. I've been watching a series on Hitler's empire. And one of the things they mention is how during the mid-30s, neighbors would often tell on other neighbors and then sometime during the night, you'd hear the jackboots coming down the hall, a knock on the door, and then muffled screams as people are taken away. Wow. And often people would sort of sit and wondering, first of all, is it going to be their door? Mm -hmm. And then if it's not, giving thanks because it wasn't. If you go back in the Bible to the book of Acts, it talks about Stephen referring to the Jews at that time as a stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? In those days, it wasn't the Jews that were being persecuted. It was the Christians. And Saul was one of the main people who did the persecution. It said that Saul was the one who had great confidence in the flesh. If anybody has confidence in the flesh, I'm more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning the zeal of persecuting the church, concerning righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He was, a, he was a Jew of the Jews, Hebrew of the Hebrews, completely blameless as far as he was concerned at that time. And what did he do? Well, he watched while Stephen was being murdered. And it says in Acts 9, 4, as for Saul, he made he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. The same as Hitler's stormtroopers did in the 30s, Saul did back in those days. And you can imagine the Christians hovering behind doors, wondering if the knock was going to come on their door or someone else's. But then, Saul became Paul. And he became persecuted himself. A big change. It says in 2 Corinthians, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, for I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often. Of the Jews, five times I received forty stripes, save one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by, perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the, country, in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. He suffered a lot after he became 
converted. He became the one he was previously persecuting. In 1 Timothy, it says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, and, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and with love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all consideration that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. He became a profound Christian who wrote much of the New Testament. So the question is this. If Saul were active today and he was still persecuting Christians, where would you stand? Mm. If you heard his troops coming down the hall, going into an apartment, dragging someone out because they were Christian, would you be one of them? Or would you be sitting back, having a nice meal, maybe a beer and remote in your home, in your hand, watching a hockey game or the baseball game or the football game? If you went out and said, hey, I'm a Christian, what about me? Would he say, oh no, you're okay. We're not going to worry about you. You're fine. Where would you stand? When Christ comes back, are you going to be sitting there in the same TV room, the same beer, same remote, same dinner fork in your hand, and suddenly your neighbors are gone? And you say, hey God, what about me? I went to church occasionally. I was there once last year. <laughs> what about me? And he says, that's okay. I only came for my family. You're good. You get to stay. Maybe it's all fake news. We hear a lot about fake news. But what if it's true? Yes. This Thanksgiving, be thankful. Yes. You're a part of the family of God. Yes. Something to think about. Amen.